Hello and welcome back to Beckler Guitars and Repair and today we're doing a much requested fret leveling tutorial video. So this is off older footage from uh, a guitar review I did for this guitar and the video just ran way too long so I'm just making a separate video on uh, yeah a full fret leveling and polishing tutorial. So hope you enjoy. The next thing we're going to do is a little bit of fret work on this guitar. So I used a fret rocker and then I noticed there was a couple high spots on this neck. Uh, there's also some divots from playwear and uh, they could also use a polish. And So I'm going to do a full um, fret filing and crowning on this guitar. Uh, it doesn't need much. I'm not going to take off a lot of material but I just want to make sure everything is nice and uh, level. So I'm going to just go through the steps quickly on how to do that. First, I just want to make sure my neck is nice and straight, meaning that um, before I do any fret work, I want to make sure that my truss rod is set tightly and there's no relief in this neck. Um, I like to do my fret work when there's little to no relief in a neck um, because when you put the strings on, it's going to naturally put relief into that neck and then you can kind of go from there in terms of action and adjusting. So as a baseline, I want to make sure that my frets are nice and level and the neck is set nice and straight. So there is a tiny bit of relief in this neck just naturally, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten this just a little bit. All right, so now that the neck is nice and straight, I'm just gonna double check with my fret rocker to see whether there is any high frets, and then I'm gonna mark those high frets with uh, a magic marker. And then when we're filing, we'll know which areas we need to pay attention to. So yeah, all the marker spots are where there was a little bit of a high fret. Again, what I'm doing with this, this is a machined piece of steel that's supposed to be perfectly level. So I'm going between three frets and if I notice there's a rock when I push this back and forth, that means that uh, out of those three frets, that middle fret is not level with the rest and that's going to cause buzzing or issues while we're playing our guitar. So once these are marked, uh, I go ahead and flat file all, all of the frets in the neck and then I put on uh, a crown with a crowning file and then everything's polished up and tested again to make sure there's no other high spots and then theoretically your whole neck should be nice and level. Next step is we need to tape up this fingerboard because this is a finished maple fingerboard and if we don't tape this up it's going to show any marks or uh, anywhere that we do and uh, it's going to be very apparent. It might also leave some stains from the files on the fingerboard and that's just something we don't want to do so when you're working on a maple fretboard you want to make sure that you are taping up your fretboard before working on your frets. I'll show you a little trick for this because it can be a, a really big pain to tape up uh, a fretboard is I'll put a strip as a base strip on the on my neck here so all the other strips of tape will attach to this strip so at the very end I can just pull on this one strip and uh, all the other tape will come off. So it's a little trick I've been using and that it just makes uh, cleaning up when you're done a lot easier so you're not sitting there forever pulling off every little strip of tape.
So there we are, all ready to be worked on. Uh, yeah, so I used to love maple necks before I started working on guitars more often. And now <laughs> I think I've just kind of naturally steered more towards rosewood just because they're easier to work on. But anyway, I'm getting to the point where I can do this in about 15 minutes or so, so it's not so bad. Um, but okay, I'm ready to go ahead and start leveling. And this is my fret leveler. Basically, it's just a, right, a nice, very level, um, fine toothed um, bastard file. And uh, I just epoxied a handle onto it. And it doesn't look like much, but I've used this thing for years and it's, it's great. It's super level and it works really, really well. And uh, so what I'm going to do is just go along the entire length of the fretboard and I'm going to try to evenly level all the frets. Um, so you can tell when a fret isn't level when you're leveling um, because it's going to feel like some resistance is there. Once everything's nice and level, it should feel very smooth and easy to move along. And that's how you know you've got everything nice and level. Then I'm going to test it with the fret rocker before I put on um, the crown with a crowning file and, uh, and then it's a polish up from there. So just uh, going to go ahead and get started on that. Uh, it's also a good idea to tape up your pickups uh, just in case a shard gets uh, in what can happen and uh, it's it's not very uh, frequent from filing frets. It's more to do with like steel wool if you're using steel wool to polish. Um, little strands of the steel wool can actually get in the coils of the pickups and then cause a failure. It's uh, I've never had it happen to me even with steel wool and I've never had it happen especially with uh, with the filings of the frets but it's probably just good practice just to throw a strand of tape on there just to prevent any issues. So I haven't taken off too much material, but I can see that all of my markings are now gone and uh, you can see a flat spot on every fret um, all the way down. So that's something you want to look for. You want to make sure you see that flat spot where you've been filing. If you're seeing two flat spots and then not a flat spot, you know you need to pay attention to that area a little bit more because that fret hasn't been filed. And uh, it's just a little bit lower than the other two if you don't see a filing mark on there. So now I'm going to go ahead and test it with a fret rocker to see how much more work I need to do. So yeah, I didn't need to take all that much material off and uh, there's still plenty of fret left on this guitar. And uh, now I'm getting no rock anywhere. And uh, so it's time to go ahead and crown these frets. I'm gonna show you my crowning method um, I also took the nut off because I noticed it was loose when I was filing and uh, it just gives you less of a chance of hitting this nut and breaking it when you're doing your fret file. So now I go ahead and slide it back in. So there is a variety of different crowning files and they all kind of do the same thing. Um, the old school method is uh, using our, hold on. I purchased this file from Crimson Guitars. It works great. It's got a rounded edge so you don't uh, damage the fingerboard when you're using it. And then you're just putting the crown on just by angling the file and making sure it's the same on both sides. This thing works really well. It's a little bit more time consuming. Uh, then I've got this Stumac one. Basically, you just make sure the fret's level and then you go ahead and back and forth with the Stumac file. It achieves the same result. And then I've got this diamond file here that you just do the same thing really too. They all do the same thing. Some people are just better at it with different types of tools. But uh, I mean, as long as you're able to achieve good results, it doesn't really matter what tool you use. Um, what you're looking to do is uh, you're crowning each file 
or you're crowning each fret by um, just making that flat spot more rounded and you're turning that flat spot into just a thin strip um, that the string is going to rest against when you're fretting the guitar. And the thinner that strip is, the less of a chance there is a buzz when you're, when you're playing. So a well-crowned guitar will have uh, just a very thin, flat strip of, uh, of level across the entire fingerboard. And that's the result we're trying to achieve. All right, now that everything's nicely crowned, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a, a sanding. I like to use, uh, you know, a fine grit sandpaper to start, and then I'll, uh, I'll move to some really uh, high grit micro mesh, which is like very, very fine grit. So up to like 6,000 you can use. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the fret buffer. So. Everything will be super shiny after that. And here's the end result. So super level, crowned, and super polished frets. All right, let's take off all the tape. And our frets are nice and level, super shiny, super polished. They look great. And uh, our fingerboard was nice and protected during the whole process. So no weird stains or divots on the fingerboard. All right, now that the fret level is all done, let's just check the setup we were able to get really quickly. And uh, you can see here using my notch straight edge that the neck is set really nice and straight. There's just a very tiny gap between the straight the notch straight edge and the fingerboard. So that tells us that the truss rod is nice and tight and the neck is nice and straight. And then here in the cowboy cord area, when I fret that third fret, you can see that first fret is just uh, resting, that first string is resting right on the first fret. So that means our action is nice and low and uh, our nut is cut nicely and the neck is set straight and the truss is tight. And then at the 12th fret, we've got an action on the low E at about one millimeter. And at the high E, yeah, it's below 0.75. So extremely low action on this guitar. And uh, yeah, let's check this, if there's any buzz or fretting out anywhere.
So yeah, even with action that really, really nice and low, there's no buzzing or fretting out anywhere on this guitar. So yeah, it was a successful fret level. And yeah, with a small amount of tools and a little practice, uh, you can do this yourself. So this is a very useful skill for uh, someone who collects guitars to have because it'll save you a lot of money in tech work and uh, you'll have guitars that all play perfectly. So that's going to be it for this video. That's how you can get uh, crazy low action on your guitar uh, by doing your own fret level. Again, action this low, you typically don't get on brand new guitars or are not even achievable on new guitars. Some of the really, really higher end ones you can, or you might just get lucky, but usually to get action this low, you got to bring it to a tech or do a fret level yourself on it. So just keep that in mind. Um, but with some simple tools and a little practice, you can easily do this yourself. So that's going to be it for today. Thank you for tuning in to Beckler Guitars and Repair, and I'll have more for you really soon. Thanks a lot.